I am Wester, and I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to talk about game 158 of the regular season. The Astros lose 7-0. We get completely bullied off the field. This is going to be a one-taker because I do not... This game is not worth spending an hour and a half or two hours uh, researching, writing, editing, and rendering because all that happened is we got completely blown out 7-0. Uh, we take yesterday's solid win, the come from behind, the momentum and completely take a dump on it by getting just ran off the field. Second inning, uh, Francisco Mejita uh, singles, makes it a one nothing ball game. Uh, Brandon Lau homers to make it a 3 nothing ball game in the same inning. Later on in the fifth, G-Man Choi with a three-run blast. His 11th of the year makes it 6 nothing. And, uh, and I'm going to be honest, um, if it weren't three players doing the damage that I like, I'd be a lot more upset. Actually, four, because then in the eighth inning, uh, Brett Phillips would triple to score the last run. And if I didn't like Wander Franco, uh, or Brett Phillips, who scored on the first one, and didn't like Brandon Lau, who homered, and G-Man Choi, and Brett Phillips again uh, scored, or hit the triple. If it weren't players that I really like, I'd be a lot more bitter. But at least there were players that I'm fans of that did the damage. Uh, Wander Franco, by the way, three for five. That kid is ridiculous. He has had just a ridiculous start to his career. He's been fantastic. 43 consecutive games reaching base. Like, who'd have thunk? This kid, <laughs> he's just... Nah, he's going to have a fun career. I'm happy I'm in the timeline that I get to watch that guy. Anyway, uh, the Astros did not much of anything. There are basically two things for the Houston Astros that are noteworthy. The first one is Michael Brantley was back. Cool, yay, he didn't play that well. Uh, 0 for 4 with a strikeout. But at the same time, he hasn't played in like a month, and let's iron this kinks out now. The other one, Maldonado had a neat catch on a pa bunt pop-out thing. So that was cool. That's all I got. Uh, the offense was terrible. Uh, three hits all night, one walk. A couple of other guys reached base, but not much of anything. The rally in the ninth inning, one guy got hit. It was just a... It was a snoozer. There's no other way to... It was a... It, it was nothing. It was a a long, boring, arduous game for the Astros. Uh, Pitching-wise, uh, Luis Garcia was not great. Five innings, three runs given up. The three run or three earned runs given up, which I should mention. That's not nothing. Given that half the runs you gave up are unearned is a big thing. He pitched well. There was just that really terrible error in the... Uh, second inning by Jose Siri, who is, uh, I mean, starting to make you question uh, playoff roster spot, because he's sort of been cooling off recently, and that was a horrific error, and upon further inspection, his defensive numbers are not impressive, and it's sort of a question where it's like, do we want to go with him? I'm perfectly having, I'm perfectly cool having McCormick being the starting center fielder for the playoffs, him and or Jake Myers. Again, having him on the bench is perfectly fine, he's super fast, so I'm down for that, but starting I'm not too positive about uh Peter Solomon was really good uh four innings I mean he walked three guys but he only gave up one run so his FIP is probably horrific but looked solid I'd be fine having him coming out of the bullpen in the play playoffs which that's really what we're kind of boiling down to at this point we're having a lot of the discussion right now needs to be about what is the playoff roster going to consist of which, I mean, it's important. There are only a few games left, right? There are only four games after this that I'm talking about where we talk about the Astros and what they want to do with the postseason. Like, it's really... The time is now to figure out what we're doing. And after uh, tonight's game, you kind of... Offensively, it was rough. But, I mean... Peter Solomon was solid. That's really all I got. Uh, it was just a meh game. Anyway, uh, tomorrow... McCullers takes the mound, so it's LMJ day, which is uh, best day of the week when Lance McCullers pitches. It's my favorite day of the week. And he rolls in with a 3-1-7, I believe the fourth best ERA in the American League. So hopefully he could potentially, because I'm pretty sure Garrett Cole had a rough start tonight, if I'm not mistaken. So his popped up a little bit, if I am correct. Let me figure that out real quick. Yeah, so, oh no, so he has the third best ERA, because Cole now is uh, well over his, so... I mean, by the end of tomorrow, we could have the second best ERA in the American League for Lance McCullers Jr. <laughs> That'd be pretty freaking cool. Uh, I'm hoping we get a nice one last good one last good start out of Lance this season. That'd be great after to punctuate just a fantastic season for Lance McCullers Jr. 
easily the best of his career. Uh, so that'd be pretty fun. That's at 7, 10 Eastern, 6, 10 Central, so a slightly earlier start time. And the Rays have not announced their starter yet, but I'll be back here after that. And I'm really hoping we clinch, because I have a lot... I, I, I spent, like, three cents on party supplies uh, for the Division Crown, uh, or for winning the Division. So I'm hoping we clinch in the next few days, because uh, I want to I wanna use that stuff. Anyway, that's all I have for the evening. Really just a rough game. But... It's tomorrow's a new day. Wake up, you know, wipe the uh, loss off your face and keep moving forward. That's all we can do at this point because we're in the last little stretch where you can't really think about yesterday's game because that could uh, end your season. Anyway, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day and as always, Ghost Rose.